Right, so uh, let's get started. Um, thank you very much for coming to UCI. Actually, I missed some of the previous talks. I'm, I'm not sure if anyone told you that you're among a very small uh, subset of very prestigious subset of students we, we admitted this year. There was, uh, we had received, I don't know, probably more than 800 applications for PhDs, more than 800 applications for PhDs. And uh, we admitted only 50 students-ish. So then you can see how prestigious you are. Very prestige, prestigious students. So that's uh, why I'm very happy to see you guys to uh, visit UCI. And so um, I'm one of the systems uh, persons here at UCI. Uh, systems is not, seems to be not as cool as machine learning these days. Um, how many people here are interested in systems? Or systems or like broadly defined systems or uh, programming languages or, or anything? No? Or, no, <laughs> nobody's interested. No. Oh, see, okay, anyways, let me tell you this. Even if machine learning is very popular these days, one of the reasons why it's become so popular is because, is because of the good relationships, the close relationships people have built between machine learning and systems. Like, if you know, like, machine learning, if you have done working machine learning, you probably know uh, frameworks like TensorFlow, right? Those big, large-scale systems that people have built to enable um, the, the, the uh, large-scale machine learning tasks, right? So without those system support, you cannot do machine learning, and you cannot do image processing, you cannot do those fancy, seemingly fancy tasks. So my presentation here is, uh, is more group-oriented, so instead of self-centered. So, uh, so we basically have um, five people here um, interested in, uh, in systems, actually, in the system group. Um, depending on how you define systems. So, it's, so basically we have Michael Franz, um, Brian Dembski, myself, Arlan, uh, Amiri Sani, and Anton sitting in the back. So five of, us, uh, five of us here are doing work related to systems. So if you want to use keywords to identify the topics um, that we we're interested in, so the, some of the keywords you can find here are programming languages, operating systems, mobile system security, compiler, big data systems, model checking, Internet of Things, um, like big data systems, Internet of Things are very popular these days. Um, so we're doing very, very, very interesting work. And actually, the order, if you look at this, the, the way that the order of those pictures and the people is based on seniority. So basically, this is the most senior person, this is the, the second most senior person, I'm the, right in the middle, the third most senior person. Anton just came here like a, a year ago, um, so. Um, Okay, so uh, we have done great stuff here at UCI. So basically, if you look at the papers that we published, um, of course, if you talk about research, there are two different ways of evaluating research, right? One is papers, where do you publish, right? And the other one is uh, money, right? How much funding, how much money you bring in. Um, so basically, so we have, look at the, the, the papers, the conferences that we published um, in the past two years, only two years, uh, between 2005 and 2006. So basically, we have published OSDI, SOSP, Unix, ADC, S Plus in the operating systems, which are top tier operating system conferences. Programming languages, we have publications in Top Plus, Uppsala, Ecoop, PPOP, Security, like Oakland Security, IEEE, SNP, which is the top, the best security conference, as well as CCS and DSS, uh, which are all very, very prestigious security conferences. And also Mobi system, Mobi, Mobi, uh, mobile systems, and Arlen is the main person doing mobile system work. And he had like two papers in Mobi system, which is very difficult. So to give you some idea of what those conferences means, you probably like, oh, those are conferences, right? So where are those conferences in this ranking? So basically, this is a ranking that somebody came up um, with like uh, 10 years ago. It was kind of a rather old ranking. But is this a mo most commonly used ranking? Like a lot of people agree on this ranking. So basically, the red conferences are those that are highlighted. Um, and the highlighted basically means that Five of, five of us that you saw on the previous slide have published paper in. And those are the top 50 conferences and the venues across all of computer science, okay, with the highest impact factors. Like the, the uh, number one, OSDI, we have paper, and PLDI, we have paper, Mobicom, S Plus, Unix, Unix ADC, for all of those conferences that we have papers. Okay, so out of this 50 conferences, top 50 conferences, we have papers in 14 of them. Right, so, um, which is a very big number. Um, 
And also talking about funding, like you guys might be really interested in because that relates to your, your future. <laughs> right? Because why we need money? Because you guys are expensive. <laughs> that's, only the, that's the only reason why we need money, right? Because each of, each of you costs a, a tremendous amount of money every year. Uh, so in terms of the amount of money that we brought in from national funding agencies like NSF, like ONR, um, or DARPA, DARPA is the DOD, Department of Defense Funding Agency. ONR is Naval, is Naval Research Office, and NSF. So if you sum all of the numbers up, you probably get um, more than six million. More than $60 million that we brought in, in two years. Okay, within the, the, the past two years. So if you come and do work with us in systems, you do not need to worry about your financial support in the next probably five or six years. Okay, it's guaranteed, and we have the ability of securing funding. And so, in the rest of my talk, I'll probably just enumerate um, our faculty members and I'll talk about their research. Um, of course, based on my very shallow understanding of what they're doing, uh, they might not agree with me on um, what I'm talking about their research, but later you will have one-on-one -on -one meetings with them so that hopefully we will get more from them in a more precise way. Like Michael Franz. So he is an ACM fellow, IEEE fellow, Chancellor's professor here, um, uh, and he is actually, a, he used to be a hardcore premier language person doing a lot of uh, compilation work, work in compilers and, and programming languages. So for example, one thing that he was very interested in, and he did a lot of work in, uh, in the past few years, was just-in-time compilation for dynamic type languages, like JavaScript. So JavaScript is a language that is probably most commonly used in the world. If you look at the number of programs reading JavaScript, so the number is bigger than the number of programs written in Java. It's bigger than the number of programs written in C++. Because every single web page now has JavaScript, right? But how do you develop compiler and the system support to speed up the JavaScript execution? So it's very important. And he did develop this trace monkey, which is a trace-based compilation. It's a new type of compilation technology, um, which is actually used by Mozilla, in practice, by Mozilla, in their Firefox browser. So now every time you open your Firefox browser, you see his technology there. So it's very, very impactful. And these days, he's, he's getting interested in language-based security. Like for example, uh, how do you develop compiler and system support that makes it difficult for hackers to hack your programs? Uh, you can do a lot of code reshuffling, you can do a lot of data reshuffling, uh, and you mess up with your stack. Um, doing a lot of things like that so that hackers would feel difficult, would find it difficult to hack your code, okay? So this is what Michael Franz is doing. And Brian Dembski. So he is associate professor, is now in this department, in the EECS uh, department, is in the, in the, the other building, but he has a joint appointment here. So if you wanted to work with him, uh, it's definitely fine. So he is actually a, a kind of a programming language, he's a real programming language person. Um, like for example, he's been interested in model checking. You know, how do you, especially when you write uh, concurrent programs, you know how difficult it is, right? When you write concurrent programs and you want to make sure that your concurrent programs are correct, right? Because you have a lot of different threads, threads can interleave in a lot of different random ways. How do you guarantee your program can, can be completely correct, right? Can generate correct behaviors. So he had developed a lot of model checking techniques that can check your programs against some specifications to make sure that your program are eventually producing correct results. Very, very important. And also memory models, like different architectures using different memory models. Um, so how do you make sure that your program running on different memory models generating correct behaviors? And these days, um, I, I'm collaborating with Brian on IoT system and security. So um, if you look at IoT, so it's essentially a bunch of, it's a collection of devices, right? cameras, um, whatever, right? Uh, sprinklers, uh, doorbells, a cl collection of smart things. And if you put them together, if you connect all of those small devices into a big system, how do you guarantee the system by itself is secure and preserving privacy, right? So you probably heard a lot of the news on those websites that uh, you can, you know, some IoT system leak private information about your home. Right? If you have your camera watching babies, but that's, you know, you can see your baby videos on some websites. So it's scary, right? So how do you develop systems that can guarantee that your IoT system working in your own home would not mistakenly 
uh, leak those privacy information. So it's very important. And then uh, we have, I'm working on, we have, we have uh, like five students working on this, uh, this topic. And myself, um, so I'm assistant professor. Hopefully I'll be associate <laughs> uh, starting Ju July. Uh, so basically my, uh, my interests are big data systems. Um, so first of all, how does, you know, what, what are big data? You, you know what big data is, right? So big, you have extremely large amount of data coming from a lot of different places, social networks, human genome projects, pictures taken from all over the place, right? How would you process those extremely large amount of data in an efficient and a scalable manner? So you need to develop systems, right? My interest is how you develop systems that can efficiently and uh, um, efficiently process this extremely large amount of data. Um, and um, also program analysis and compilers. Um, this is one of my old interests. So I develop a lot of program analysis that uh, help developers find bugs, help developers find performance problems in your programs. And these days, I'm, I'm interested in the runtime distributed systems. Because a lot of those big data systems are actually distributed systems, right? Uh, you have a large cluster with a lot of different machines, different nodes connected by the cluster. And then, uh, then you have some kind of like high level big data analytical tasks that need to be run on this cluster. So there are a lot of efficiency problems. Um, and also like a whole bunch of systems issues like I.O., like communication, um, and like scheduling. How you make sure that your big data system is scheduled, has, has, a, has a very good scheduling uh, technique so that uh, you can achieve efficiency and scalability. And also I'm, I'm working with Brian Dembski on IoT, IoT system and security. So Arlen, Arlen um, is a system professor. He came to the department, I think two years ago, two, three years ago, two years ago actually. This is his third year. Um, two years ago. And uh, his research interests are primarily in this area of uh, mobile and operating systems. Uh, he has done a lot of work in mobile systems. For example, how do you uh, develop virtualized I.O. in mobile systems? Like I want to, I have two smartphones. I want to use one smartphone to control the devices for the other smartphone for some purposes. Right? How do you develop this kind of system support? You need to hack the operating system kernel. You need to hack hack the applications. There are a lot of different layers uh, in your computer stack you need to hack to achieve those tasks. Uh, that's what he's interested in. And also, he, uh, these days, he's been interested in like, system security. Like, for example, if you if were like, in the conversation, right? so how do, you, how do you make sure that I'm not using my phone to record the conversation? I might be using my phone here like, in, in my pocket, like recording our conversation, right? And I might use this for some other purposes. So how do you make sure uh, that I'm not using my phone to record, right? So you have, there are a lot of security and privacy issues. So, so right now I think he has, he has been developing some sort of notification system to make sure that if you are trying to record, your cell phone is gonna generate some kind of signals that, let, that will let me know that you're recording. Um, but you have to provide guarantees that this notification system must be turned on as we're doing this conversation, right? Um, and finally, Anton, we are sitting in the back. Probably I should let you speak yourself, for yourself. <laughs> but anyways, he is probably, among five of us, he is probably the most hardcore OS person, I would say, right? <laughs> he is a, the most hardcore OS person. He came to the department a year ago. Um, and uh, he's interested in OS, virtual machines, system security. And uh, recently, I think one of the projects he's working on is how do you build uh, secure, correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> okay? How do you build secure OS kernels? operating system kernels uh, by not splitting the kernel code base into a small number of uh, micro kernels. How do you actually unify, basically develop a, a secure kernel within the same address space? Kernel address, because I'm, I'm precise enough or? Okay, great. Okay, so um, I think he's also like looking for students because he just, he's one of the youngest professors here. All right, so uh, I think that's pretty much it. And um, welcome to join UCI. I mean, if you, if you come, uh, we'll be very happy. Um, and I, I think we're doing awesome group, uh, awesome research here at UCI uh, in terms of research, uh, system research. Programming languages, systems, all sorts of different things. And then there are a lot of opportunities to collaborate uh, within this group and cross the boundaries uh, between groups. Uh, and also, for example, if you're interested in machine learning, there are a lot of opportunities to work both in the system group and the machine learning group, so that you will look at you will look at problems like how you develop systems to power machine learning tasks. I think there are a lot of interesting things uh, happening here at UCI.
Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we'll have a short break, a uh, 10 minute break, and then there will be, after that, we will start a, <coughs> a student panel. So, the graduate students from uh, like different seniority from uh, year one to year five will come into the room. Faculty will leave, and you can ask them any questions.